can't help myself, so I have to talk. Um, one of the words that we've kind of heard a lot getting ready for this show is emotional. And as you can see from my smile, they've all been such wonderful emotions. Like we feel so happy and we feel excited. We feel happy because we've had a week of working hard to hang this show, to engage with this wonderful art, and it has just put a smile on our faces because this is really one of the best shows that's ever been here. Yeah. 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 I'm excited to hang out with Brent Pokes. Oh! They're here! Go on, you're good, Pete. I've been down the stairs here. I can't help myself. We're proud. In this gallery, we've always tried to produce work that has celebrated individuals, their differences, their experiences, and what it means to be human. And to us, it's a source of pride. We didn't ask for this show, it found its way here. And we're so grateful for that. So I'd love to introduce Dorothy, who's going to talk loosely about the world. Well, actually, I'm not going to speak about the work. My role here tonight is to, even though I will be speaking about the work in Cork, is to introduce Brent Pope. And when I heard that Brent had this passion for outsider art, I was kind of thrilled because I thought another string to his already very glorious bow, but also a passion that one doesn't usually associate with former rugby players and <laughs> presenters, <laughs> and yet it's so rich. Um, and I was, in a, in a, I was actually in a cave in the southwest of France the other day, looking at a drawing of a bison that was drawn 14,000 years ago. And as I was coming home, I was thinking, you know, what would I say in the introduction of Brent? Um, the, the, the amazing... When those people drew that bison, now those people are unknown, we don't know who drew them, but they also drew an animal that didn't exist in Europe. And what is fabulous about this show is we're looking at art made by people all over this country that I certainly have never seen before and is now being seen without having to wait for 14,000 years. I suppose I can speak about rugby. <laughs> George is not here. He's yeah. so. <laughs> around the country promoting his latest autobiography about his people who have been met me. So he but um, no, what I meant to say, I suppose I can talk in front of um, hundreds of thousands of people about rugby, but I'm very nervous uh, speaking about this because it, it is emotional. Um, so if I get a bit sort of well up a bit, uh, you'll understand. First of all, things like this don't happen with, without um, really great thanks. First of all, you know. Thank you for the introduction, Dorothy. You know, a, a world-renowned artist to even be involved with this, so I'm honoured. Uh, to Les and the team here, you know, the work that you put in. You're right. We did find this place. I wanted the art. I think the art belonged in, in somewhere that wasn't kind of traditional. And we walked around looking at a lot of places, and this was this was the one we chose. And I think it's fantastic. You all agree, the space yeah. here. Yeah. You know, and, and it's kind of it's, it's where I first started the art in Wellington. It was a, it was a working gallery, and it has that feel to it. So thanks for all, all your work. And to Catherine, where's Catherine Marshall? Yeah. Catherine, thanks so much. Uh, Catherine, again, world-renowned historian. She came on and she validated the work for me, which was vital. When I first started this journey, I suppose the hardest thing for me was to say, I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert on outsider art. It's just a passion that I've had for years. And for Catherine to come on board and actually say, this work is really great. It meant so much. So thanks again, uh, Catherine. For, and for the <laughs> Uh, the people that we're all here to celebrate, first of all, thanks to all my friends and all my guests and the people that have come here to celebrate this art. But it's really about the artists, and my God, have they enriched my life. Um, we're making a documentary following some of the artists that will be going out on RT uh, next week, so hopefully you all tune in. But, you know, how inspirational they've been to me, you know, how they've come through parts in their life um, and used art as therapy, used art there for their way back. And, 
you know, self-taught. I love the term, I don't even like the term kind of outsider art because I think that puts people on the outside and they don't deserve to be on the outside. They're very much on the inside as far as I'm concerned. But the one term that... <laughs> that I love sums it up most for me is art uncooked by culture. And um, I think that these artists aren't about commercial gain, they're not about recognition, they're not about being critiqued, they're just about getting up in the morning and being, uh, that knowing that art makes them feel great. And they work, and they work in the days, whether it's uh, Alan riding his bike 50 miles to paint some of the wonderful um, the paintings of the buildings, or for other artists like Lisa to spend so many hours in, in a in a house making that magnificent piece. So I just want to thank the artists and, and Alan who have become friends with me. I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to have this. This was a dream for me, uh, more so than, than rugby and anything like that. About five years ago I was in New York. I always used to go over to the Outsider Art Fair in New York and somebody said to me one time, I'd have been going for years, and somebody said to me, uh, where are you from, Brent? I said, I've just come over from Dublin. I said, my God, there must be some wonderful Outsider Art in Dublin because of your culture, because of the history, because of the tapestry of, of, of all these things. And it got me thinking five years ago, you know, my God, wouldn't it be great to discover artists, outsider artists in, in Ireland? Not to discover outsider artists in Ireland, but to discover them that would hang in any gallery around the world. And I think we've found that. Uh, we've got so many submissions uh, from people. It was very hard to choose. And, that, you know, I thank Catherine again for that. And, you know, they had to meet certain criteria you see in the documentary. But most of all, it was just about the celebration of this form of art. And, you know, it's since been validated, and I think you'll know now that any of this work could hang up along anything in New York and Chicago and all these places I've visited. So that was a dream five years ago. Uh, you know, so it's been five years doing that. This year we spent a whole year making the documentary, and it's going to be fantastic. So please tune in and see the, the journey of the art. But once again, for both of you, it is emotional for me, and I just want to thank you for celebrating this art with me as well. So thank you very, very much. forgot the most important person, uh, Connor Colleen uh, from uh, Key Capital. Without the sponsorship wouldn't have made this happen, so please apologise, you get a bit tongue-tied talking about this, but without him this wouldn't have happened, so his generosity and Key Capital, thank you very, very much. For